Cuba, it's me. Welcome to episode 337 of the Willu Show, which stands for Wrestling is Life. Life is wrestling. Now today, it's time to talk about satisfaction. And I mean that pertaining to wrestling, not in any other way. Now, if you're a fan, you might have a different answer. If you're a manager, you might have a different answer. If you're a wrestler, you might have a different answer. If you're a referee, you might have a different answer. If you're just part of the setup crew, or the ring crew, or the backstage hands, or whatever it is. every And even two different wrestlers will probably have two different opinions. But what is, by the way you chair, what is the most satisfying thing to you about wrestling? Um, speaking personally, as a fan and a wrestler, for me as a fan, the most satisfying thing for me and exciting thing is when I get surprised. Like if I watch uh, WWE and stuff, a lot of the stuff seems so predictable. So when something happens that shocks me or somebody shows up and the internet hasn't ruined it for me, that is so satisfying. Or just when I'm not expecting something. Like sometimes there's a match and I really have no desire to see it. And then it blows my mind away. Um, like the first time I seen Velveteen Dream versus um, Alistair Black, I was just like, uh, oh, second match on the card, I don't know who either of these guys are, well, I knew the one guy, but I had, I didn't like him, I didn't care for him, and then I was like, what am I seeing? So that kind of stuff is just so satisfying to me as a fan. Um, anything with somebody that I am emotionally invested into, when, to this day, I know the ins and outs of the wrestling business, Half of my life has been spent in the wrestling business, but I can still get emotionally invested, especially nowadays with social media. Like if you look at WWE, they have all these backstage documentaries. They have like these Total Diva shows and these WWE 24 and these NXT and these ESP and 30 for 30 specials. And they have all this backstage stuff where and social media like twitter and facebook and all this stuff where you can get to know the people behind the characters they play and once you feel for them and um like really get invested in them and really care for them and feel like you know them and feel like you're on their team and feel like you're riding doing the ride right alongside with them that and then they have success is where i was going with it that is an incredible feeling like the whole daniel bryan thing which they just, for it was like a two-year build. And I wasn't even that big of a fan of Brian, but I just love the underdog story. I love the underdog story always, too. And I, I get happy tears sometimes when, over-wrestling, yes, over-wrestling. But for me, as a wrestler myself, there is quite a lot of things that are satisfying. And I almost want to say satisfying, excitement, excitisfying. Can I make a new word? I think I can. But, um... There's so many parts of it. Um, the excitement and the satisfying, knowing I have something to look forward to. Like when a show is coming up, like I have a show coming up next weekend. So in my daily life, I'm just the cameraman's dad. I, no one really cares that I'm a wrestler. Some people don't even know. And the people that do know, most of them don't really care. Most of them just know me as somebody at work, a coworker, or they know me as the cameraman's dad. And so, even though wrestling is such a big part of my life, to the people that I generally see in my life, it's not a big deal to them. So, I have a purpose, and that is to be the best cameraman father that I can be. And I love that. I'm not complaining. That is what my purpose is, and that is what I always wanted to do. But, sometimes it's nice to have a little light at the end of the tunnel. When you know you have a wrestling event coming up, couple days away I start getting tingles I start getting goosebumps I can't help but smile it's like it's like I know I'm gonna get like a huge reward in a couple days so it's just like it's like a holiday it's like a birthday or Christmas for me it's like oh my it's coming up the date is marked on my calendar and then not only that you go through social media and you see other people they start talking about it like oh hey there's this show coming up and People are putting up their promos, talking about their show, or everyone's sharing the event, and you're like, oh, it's it's actually getting close. Like, sometimes, um, I'm not, like, booked every weekend, like some of these other guys. And um, so, it's not 
for me, sometimes it's like it feels like it's forever away. It's like, man, it's still five weeks away. And then all of a sudden it's like, it's only a week away? No way. And then the reality sets in and then I just like, I can't get the grin off my face. So just the anticipation alone is very satisfying for me because it's just, it gives me something to think about and be um, excited for. And um, okay, so then I get to the show and for me, it's very satisfying seeing my friends, seeing my acquaintances, seeing the people that may not even like me and I may not even like them. But it's just nice to have a social life because I don't really have a social life. I don't really have that many friends that aren't in the wrestling business. And who knows how many friends I really actually do have in the wrestling business. But the only social time I ever get is on my phone, sending messages. No one wants to talk on the phone anymore except for Lenny Lilac. He's like the only one that'll talk to me on the phone. If you phone someone else, they're like, why don't you just send me a message? And it's like, well, I, I could talk to you for five minutes and say the same amount of stuff that it'll take me an hour to type up. But, um, you know, so that my only social life is posting through social media and having people reply to me or sending me a message. So that's my social life. And then I go to the show. And there's a lot of people there. And sometimes you only get five minutes to talk to each person. But what a wonderful feeling. Sometimes, now I don't know if I could go to a wrestling show if I wasn't wrestling because I think I'd be too jealous. But sometimes the social part of it is just as fun for me as, as the wrestling. Almost. But... I'm just saying I really enjoy it. So that is very satisfying to me. And then, the like, just like I was saying, the anticipation. But when it's like, okay, here's the match. The match is starting right after this match. You're on deck. Your match is next. And then you're like, okay. And just like, what a feeling comes over my body. It's like something takes over. I get like these goosebumps and this excitement and this nervousness and this like amazing anticipation and riled up and like I just become a new person and I just like feel like I can't even describe the feeling man I it's better than it's any sex or any drugs I've ever had and um so just before you go out and then you're also hoping like I hope it's good like there's a little bit of worry too but even the worry I enjoy because then if it turns out positive, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you go and you don't get a good reaction or you don't have a good match. But in general, at least in the last four or five years, when I do go out, I get a good response. So like I'm all worried and worried. And then the instant gratification when you go out and they start cheering, or sometimes you haven't even gone out yet and they're like playing your music or they're like, it's the, the tag team match and they know you're in it so they start chanting a little bit Cuba you can hear Cuba in the background oh they, they know they remember so that that's a great feeling and then the response man <coughs> excuse me I had some pierogies excuse me and then so the, the response is incredible I never used to get a response like that and I never used to uh, pander to the crowd to get that response and now I do and I receive it and they give it back to me more than I could ever imagine that is probably one of the most satisfying feelings. Like, I used to always just want to have the best match, invent new moves, do something that would be talked about for a long time. And now, I go out there and get a tremendous response. And to me, it almost seems like the match comes second now because I just, I'm like with my people and we're like in it together. And I just, I'm taking it all in. And I'm, I'm, I'm amazed every time that they chant crazy for Cuba. Like, it just, what a feeling it's so satisfying and then after the match when things went mostly well now i'm very hard on myself so even if it's good i think it's bad if it's great i think it's good if it's like perfect i think it's great like i'll never be totally satisfied but when you know that what you did was successful and the crowd enjoyed themselves and you put on a good show man what a feeling that is it's oh, it's indescribable really like you just feel on top of the world like you can take on anything you can conquer anything but i think the most satisfying thing for me i have to say i never received a lot of compliments growing up especially from my dad he would always tell me what i did wrong he could never wanted to tell me what i did right and my grandma was the same way and i respected that from them because that's what made me always strive to get better and that's what made me want to be a perfectionist and be such a hard worker 
So I'm glad the way I was raised, but man, I take do not take compliments lightly. A compliment can make my whole night. And then if you get four or five of them, and the fans want to take some pictures with you, and they're like, oh, I love your energy. You're so much fun out there. Like, the show isn't the same without you, or whatever they say. <sighs> Hopefully they mean it. I don't see why they would say it if they didn't mean it and just blow and smoke on my butt. But the compliments just, man, I live for those compliments. And I'm not out here fishing for compliments. Because I'm so humble and like I'm not one of those braggers like you see people take a picture they'll take a picture with a kid and they're like oh they, I took a picture with a kid it's like I take tons of pictures with kids I'm just I'm not a bragger so I don't want to force people force myself down people's throats I'm humble but I mean I the compliments wow like I'll never I'll never beg for them but when I get them honestly they make my night I come home and I just sit there and I can't even sleep after wrestling like I'll try to I'll, my body's dead tired I can't even move I'll lay down and my brain won't shut off it'll be like oh remember when person said this or when that person said that and it's also the opposite with anything negative if I <laughs> I'm very bad at taking criticism so then I'll address or if I said something wrong or I may have made a joke and someone took it the wrong way I'm very hard on myself too so but I'm talking about satisfaction in this episode so the compliments and knowing that I gave something people they like and that they got their money's worth and they want to see me again or like sometimes I'll get a couple new people that will add me to Facebook or something or some new fans or someone will subscribe to the Willow show or like when I had the shirts right here and everyone wanted to buy one because I, I was so scared to get shirts I'm like I, I can't afford to take this gamble I can't lose money and then they sold out and it's like Wow, people actually want to wear, wear, support me, or maybe they just like the shirt. I love wrestling. Who doesn't like I love wrestling shirt? But still, it's it's it just made my day. But I want to hear from you guys. If you're a fan, what is the most satisfying part about wrestling to you? If you're a performer, what is the most satisfying thing about wrestling to you? Because always on the Willow Show, make sure you like or you get a leg drop, comment or you get a clothesline. Subscriber, you get a suplex. I'm your host, Elian Habanero. I love wrestling. Cuba.